Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKayar and welcome to our first night of Thursday Rockin' Pours. I'll be leading off the night at 6.30. I'll be followed up by Lori Houston Art at 6.45. Following Lori will be Amber's Awfully Awesome Art at 7. And then after her, we'll have Angela Bliss Art finishing up the Rockin' Pourin' Night at 7.15. I will have all the links in the description for the next artist in the order. So just click to my description and you'll just get to the next uh, artist. And sit back, enjoy yourself, join us in the live chat, crack a beer, open up a bottle of wine, and have some fun. We're looking forward to tonight sharing with you some really cool art. All right, we'll see you in a second. Uh, back again. Um, because the last pour for my friend's clock, I really liked it on black. I'm going to do it again on this Lazy Susan. This again is a Lazy Susan that I got from Ikea. And I've already got the back prepared. It's taped up and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna lay down my uh, my Sherwin-Williams Tricorn Black and the same color combination I had before. My Iridescent Silver, my Bordeaux Red, Quinacridone Nicolazzo, and my 24 Karat Simple Color Palette. Mind you, these are thicker paints, and I'll be back. I've got my Amer um, I've got my Australian Floetrol Cell Activator, and I mix this one to one. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, everybody. So I had the pillow laid for about five minutes, and I'm sitting here debating whether I use this palette knife or this one. And I've been thinking about how I can spread this out. Thought this is too big. I'm gonna have a big mess. So I'm gonna save you about three minutes of indecision here. Okay, I'm gonna go with the big one. I'm gonna go with the big one, and I might regret it, but do big swathy swipes. Okay, going with this one. All right, cell activator. So this is the Australian flow trawl. Lay it out there. Okay, now my silver. Oh gosh, I don't know if you guys can see. I've got the silver. My Bordeaux red. It's still too thick. But I'm not worried about thick and swipe, because a swipe thick is fine. At least with this recipe. Quinacridone, Nicolazzo Gold. And my gold. How much can a palette knife hold? All right, wish me luck. After all this consternation, That's what I was worried about, getting to the end and not having any paint. Let's see if we can adjust this somewhat. Let's start by pushing it down this way. Okay, well, not, I'm not sure what's gonna happen here, but I'm gonna keep going. So I continue to stretch and tilt and play with this thing, trying to get the color to come through. And I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit here. Do I dare try another swipe in there? It looks just sloppy in there, it's just sloppy. And when in doubt, pick up a palette knife and start playing around. I mean, I like, I like some of it. Maybe it'll develop. So I'm gonna pick up the pace here and you're gonna see a lot of picking up the pace and skip cuts going forward. So in my forever hopefulness, I try to take matters into my hands. So I pick up the palette knife, my smallest one, and I just start playing with the composition 
seeing what I can do, hopefully trying to get some of that color to come through in the whole piece. So here I've switched to my mid-size palette knife in hopes that I'll get some color to stretch here. And I keep working it. And no matter what, I love the effects of the white cell activator spread out over the black pillow because once it's spun out, it creates such a ghostly, transparent look. It's really cool. So after a few more swipes, I stood and stared at it for another few minutes, thinking now my paint is going to start drying. And then I decided to take matters in my own hands. And I prepare another palette knife for a swipe. Start with cell activator. And I'm going to skip ahead here. I loaded up the same way as the first time, and I'm going to get ready to swipe. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make this thing work. So I'm going to skip past the loading the palette knife and get right to it. All right, we'll try this again. Okay, well, at least I got something. At least there's a little more balance now. Okay, I'm expecting this is going to spin off with other stuff. Okay. Let's spread out some of this black. So I'm going to definitely skip ahead here. Oh, let's center this thing up first. Nice gentle spin. So as you see, my first gentle spin spread it out some, and now I'm going to be helping it along. I'm going to skip ahead again, adding a little more paint to help it spread. And one of the things I mention here is that sometimes some pieces just require a lot more attention. And this one, frankly, it was harder than a tray for me. And it just takes patience. Patience you have to have sometimes because you're building it step by step and layer by layer. So I'm going to cut out some of the spinning. I just got to be patient. I'm sitting here already trying to think I need to stretch this out some more. But what I need to do is just be patient. So more slow and deliberate stretching of the paint to the sides and edges and more additional paint being added. I'm going to be skipping ahead through some of this, but giving you snippets as we go. So for the next few spinning parts, it looks like the spinner is hesitating, but it's not. It's just the Lazy Susan's not centered properly on the turntable. All right, so let's just keep going. Okay, let's stay patient. I know I'm crooked. That's okay. The top part is actually farther off the edge, and what that does is it helps pull the paint in that direction. I want that top to spread. I feel like I'm playing some sport, some weird frisbee. <laughs> Just keep going. going. I wonder if it's too late for me to palette knife the top. Never too late. You know what I'm going to do? I don't like the shape of this. I'm going to. So I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit here and skip ahead as well. What I'm doing is I want to make negative space on the bottom to get rid of some of that just plain cell activator that's hanging there and make it more 
connected to what is going on at the top. So I'm just putting in some black for negative space, and then I'm going to work on the composition after that. Okay, let's keep going. Maybe I just need to shift it. So it's through this section I'm continuing to try to stretch that top out. And the fact of the matter is it's just not going to happen because there was only one swipe there versus two swipes near the middle and the bottom. So there's just not enough paint to go around. So I have to come to a resolution here. i got to get more balance to this thing. All right, let's play this. So here all I'm doing at the top is just having some wisps go to the edge of the turntable to match what's going on on the bottom because I don't want the composition to look like it's just floating in a black space. I want it to be connected to the Lazy Susan. Okay, I like that. I like that. So now I got balance on both sides. I like you. I like that I filled that in. You do a little. A little touch there just to finish it off. I think I've tortured it enough. I just wish we had more spread on the top. And I just don't see any way to. I can't balance it any better than that. But you know what? Maybe that's okay. Because the colors are great. Still got the black here. I like that. I think that's it. Well, I'd say this is a success. It's not perfectly balanced, but you know what? It has an orientation, right? When you look at it like that, pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. Thank you for sticking with me. Lots of skips and speed ups. I'm sorry about that, but this is the result, resin. I love the final result, and it looks three-dimensional on this black background. Can't be any happier. So next, we're going to go to Lori Houston Art, and if you go to my drop down below, you'll see the link to her channel. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time.